I was so excited to get this model. I am such a nerd. The first few steps of the build were pretty uneventful. Everything just works. No problems whatsoever. There's a few things that need to be painted in the early stages, and they're pretty easy to take care of. I started off with some black Mr. Surfacer, and then painted some of the areas with all clad silver to get a metal looking finish on the parts that needed it. The cockpit detail is really nice, but I did get the Red Fox 3D decals to make it better. Unfortunately, they took a really long time to get here and I got impatient, so I just built the cockpit out of the box. But I bought another one of these kits so I can use that decal set later. The weapons bays look really cool once they're all painted up. To me, I've really put a lot of detail in here. All of these major assemblies go together really well, as you can see. And I just love it when things fit good. This hobby is supposed to be relaxing and not cause any stress. If I wanted more stress in my life, there's a whole lot of other things I could be doing. So remember that one time I said everything fits together really good? That remains true as long as you build this kit with the landing gear down. If you want to display this model in flight, we start to run into some fitting problems. The landing gear doors don't really fit where they need to go if they're going to be closed, so we have to remove some of the plastic around the edges of the gear bays. I spent a lot of time doing this and I still couldn't get it to be perfect. The nose bay is the worst one and I'll show you that a little bit later. I really like the pilot figure. It has a good amount of detail and it's posed perfectly for the hands to be on the control stick and the throttle. Looks pretty cool. I used the same black primer as before and then I used some Vallejo paints for all of the details on the pilot. I also used some Tamiya black panel liner to give it a little bit more depth.
Now here's where we start to deviate a little bit from just an out of the box build. I wanted to display it in flight, which means I needed to build a base for it and figure out a way to attach it to the base. My inspiration for this was a video I saw on the Primed Model Works YouTube channel. For one of his models, he built a base that's painted with the American flag on it, and then he used some acrylic rod coming out of the exhaust down to the base. I like that idea, but it wasn't going to work for my situation because I want to display my model with a full afterburner. So my solution was to drill a hole in the bottom of the fuselage at just the right angle so that it would have a really dynamic pose. The tube would also allow me to run some wires down to the base so that I would be able to light up the afterburner and depict some of the missile launches too. The two-part epoxy that I used to glue the rod in place took up more space than I thought, and it prevented me from being able to close the fuselage halves together. To fix that, I had to remove some of the plastic where the tail connects to the fuselage, and that did the trick. Going back to the landing gear door problem, the pieces just don't fit together at all. I did my best to remove the material that prevented them from closing, but the results were not that great. When it was time to paint, I used the included closed door pieces for the weapons base. At least it comes with those, they were good paint masks. The painting started off with black primer and I'm still struggling to get a good smooth result when painting and priming. I don't know what the problem is. I ended up doing several coats and then sanding them down to get the best finish possible.
I wanted to give the final paint job a little bit of a metallic sheen. So after the primer, I painted the whole thing with all clad chrome. Once the whole thing was covered in metal paint, I used Vallejo's Camouflage Gray mixed with some gloss varnish and a whole lot of paint thinner so that I could build it up in layers and still allow the metal color to be visible. It didn't work quite how I imagined, but it, it turned out okay. I used the suggested paint color ratios in the instructions for all of the small details. Now it's time for the decals. There are a lot of them. And I won't bore you with that, so we'll just look at a few of them. The decals are really nice, but they're pretty thick, which is kind of annoying. So getting them to look like they're painted on took a lot of work. Started off with several coats of clear varnish and then wet sanding between each coat. I never was very good at sanding and ended up sanding a bit too deep in a few parts. With some of the edges and raised details, I ended up sanding all the way down to the primer. So I ended up having to do some touch-up work with the camouflage gray base color. The weapons bays look really cool when they're full of bombs. Unfortunately, the bombs also cover up all of the nice detail in there. Once those were installed, I added the doors to the weapons bays, and then it was time to work on the lighting. It's time to talk about the afterburner. I did a lot of research on the internet to find some good reference images on how I could tackle this. The look I was after is captured in these images here that I found online. It kind of looks like there's an orange pink cone with rings glowing on the inside of an outer cone that kind of glows blue. I think this looks really cool. So this got the gears turning in my head about how I could do that. My first thought was to make an inner cone and an outer cone using 3D printing. So I built up some simple objects in a free program called Blender, and then I used my Anycubic Mono X to print them. At first they looked good, but after curing them, they started to turn yellow. And when I held them up in the light, you could see the print layers, and I could sand those away on the outside of the cone, but not on the inside. 
So that didn't end up working, so back to brainstorming. I decided to try using some leftover acrylic tubes that I had from when I built a water cooling system for my computer. I had a heat gun and I tried to stretch them into the shape of a cone. It kind of worked, but not as well as I wanted, so I had another idea. This time I took some acrylic rod and then I used the lathe to make a cone. This actually worked pretty good, but there was a slight problem and I didn't realize it until I was done with it. The whole idea for creating this inner cone was to make it so that you could see those glowing rings. But with the cone being solid, the rings were distorted so they didn't look like rings. They looked kind of like crescents. Not what I wanted. So I went back to the tube melting idea. And after using up almost all of my tubes, I finally got some shapes that were good enough. I used a pipe cutter to start the cuts for the rings, and I cut those out so that they would catch the light. I sanded the cones so that they weren't 100% glossy. They needed to be somewhere between a matte and satin finish so that they would glow properly. The next thing to do was work on the lighting to make sure that the cones glowed properly. I used two blue LEDs and I sanded them down so that they would fit inside the exhaust nozzle and only light up the outside cone and not the inside one. The inside cone that will light up the rings uses a bright SMD that I painted with some Tamiya clear orange and clear red. I also painted the edge of the outer cone with some Tamiya clear blue as well. After testing it, I felt I was on the right track, so I moved on. Now it's time to move on to the missiles. I wanted to depict the missiles being fired, so they needed their own little afterburner glows and smoke trails. I used these small LED filaments for that. I soldered wires to the ends of the filaments, and then I used some of my tube stretching mistakes from the afterburner to make the smoke trails. After that, I drilled out the backs of the missiles and glued the filaments into the back of the missiles. After that, I had to connect the wiring together and I tested everything multiple times to make sure everything was working. And this is where disaster occurred. While I was prepping the wires for soldering, I didn't notice it, but off to the left of the camera is where my soldering iron was. And guess where my missile was while I was doing all of this? Well, sh Now what am I gonna do? A deformed missile is not going to work. Luckily, I had some leftover missiles from my A-10 build in my last video. I used some hot glue to attach the missile smoke trails to the missile bay doors and to hide the wires. Later on, I glue a whole bunch of cotton to the tubes to make it look like smoke. Now let's move on to the base. I like the idea of doing a flag for the base, like that Prime Model Works video, but I wanted to make it 3D. For this, I went over to my dad's house. He has a CNC mill, and we used that to cut out the base. This was a really cool project, and I love using that tool. I had it cut a wavy profile, and then we used a V-bit to carve out the stars and stripes. Once I got the base home, I went ahead and started sanding and prepping it for paint. It took a lot of sanding, then priming, then sanding, then priming, but I finally got it ready for painting. Once it was smooth enough, I used Model Master acrylics for the blue and the red. For the 
stars, I asked my wife to use her vinyl cutting machine to cut those out for me, and they worked perfectly. It was really satisfying to put those on the base, and I think it's really satisfying to watch too. I sprayed it with multiple coats of Pledge Future to make sure I got a good solid surface on top. After that I painted the edges of the flag with black to give it a vignette effect. And then to finish it off I sprayed a whole bunch of coats of flat varnish. Under the flag part of the base is another block of wood where all of the electronics would be installed. I needed a cutout for the switch and for the batteries, and I also needed to make a trench for all of the wires. For that, I used a rotary tool and I went to work cutting those out. In hindsight, it would have been much easier to build a hollow frame around the outside of the base. I wouldn't have to do all of this. I learned something new again. I used a bit of styrene sheet to make a frame around the switch to hide my ugly routing work. The final touches were to finish the assembly of the model and then paint the edges of the base with this really, really dark black paint. They say it's darker than black 3.0, so I gave it a shot. And that was pretty much it. So here, take a look at how it turned out. I built the afterburner part so that it could be removable because it looks kind of dumb when it's not lit up. I think it looks pretty cool when it is lit though. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. I just hit a thousand subscribers and I can't thank you enough for all of the support that you've given me. I really appreciate it. Until next time, happy modeling.